All right, so we're going to uh, find an exponential equation with two points. So in order to do that, so our, our, I mean, our question here is we're looking for an exponential that goes through 126 and 5, 4, 16. So this is a situation where we don't have a table. We don't know what the multiplier is. Um, we don't know what the zero step is, so we have to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula here. Y is equal to AB to the X power. That's the generic formula for an exponential equation. So what we're going to do is set up a system with this. So I'm going to use this point, 1 and 26, and then this one, 5 and 4, 16. Just so when I set these up, you kind of know where everything came from. So remember, this is my X and this is my Y. This is my X and this is my Y. So for this one, my Y is 26. I have no idea what A is. I have no idea what B is, but it's to the power of 1. And then this one right here, my y is 416. I have no idea what my a is, no idea what my b is, but I know it's to the power of 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two equations, and I'm going to set up a system of equations, just like you did with lines. You just kind of stack them. Now, um, some people will ask, does it matter what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? Not really. I'm going to do it like this. Now, um, when you do a system of equations with lines, uh, usually what happens is you try to use elimination. So it means, uh, in this particular case, someone might look at this and say, oh, I know what you do. You multiply everything by negative 1, and then the a's will cancel out. Well, you're right about the a's canceling out if that's what you think, but you're wrong in saying that we're going to multiply everything by a negative because... We can't do that because of these two terms here. One is to the power of 1, one is to the power of 5. We can't subtract. But what we can do is we can divide. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take this stack right here and do this, this, and this. So I'm going to divide everything rather than subtract it. So uh, 26 over 416. So actually 26 goes into both of these. So this fraction would reduce down to 1 over 16. Um, this is a over a, that's just 1, so it basically cancels out. And then I have uh, 1b up here and 5 down here, so that would actually simplify to this. Okay. Uh, so I want to jump back to that question um, I kind of posed. Is, does it matter which way you set this up? Well, if I set it up the other way, if I put this on top, let's say, I put... Some people will always put the larger one on top, and I sort of understand why they would do that, uh, because something freaky like this doesn't happen, but if you look, it's going to come out the same. So if I simplify this, what happens is I get a 16 up here, and then this. So the difference between this and this is really nothing, because I have to figure out, in both situations, what to the power of 4 is 16. So what do I do now? Well, there's, there's ways to do this with a calculator, um, but generally speaking, your multiplier for these types of problems will usually be a one-digit number uh, between 2 and 10. Sometimes I use 10, but usually it's between 2 and 9. This is a number multiplied by itself four times equals 16. Well, guess what? If I multiply it by itself four times by, and I only get 16, that's not a very big number. So I think it's 2. So you can get your calculator out and you can go ahead and give that a shot. And the way you do that on a calculator, by the way, is I'm going to try 2. So if I do... 2, um, the exponent's usually this little uh, caret button, this little triangle. So 2 to the power of 4, I get 16, so I know that b is 16. So that's why it doesn't matter if you do it this way or this way, because either way, I had to figure out what to the power of 4 was 16. So I know b is 16. So that is my b term. And just like you do with lines, once you know what the b term is, you can substitute that into the equation. Um, oh, whoops, that was 2. Uh, you can substitute that into the equation to figure out the rest of it. Okay? So we already know that the formula is y is equal to a, b, x. I just figured out that b is 2. And what I'm going to do is substitute one of these points in again. So I'm going to put 1 here, and then 26 over here. So there's my equation. 26 is equal to a times basically 2, which can be written like that. And 2 times something is 26. Well, that's not hard at all. That's 13. So now I know that my a term is 13. So now I have my rule. y is equal to a is 13, 
times 2 to the x power. And um, as I always do when I make up rules, I always check it just to make sure. So um, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to do, thir I'm gonna do 13 times 2 to the fifth power because that's my input. 2 to the fifth power. And I get 416, and that's what I was supposed to get, so I know that this is the rule. So it's quite simple. That's how you find an exponential equation with two points.